So I just sat down to read the book, Thinker Toys, and many of you have probably read it, but um, just sitting down, it's been on my book list uh, for a long time, but I wanted to read for you the acknowledgement. This is even before the uh, contents and the chapters start in this book. So I haven't read a page of the book besides the, uh, you know, the dedication, which is one sentence, and the acknowledgement. But I wanted to read you the acknowledgement because of how relevant it is to what's going on in the world right now. So again, this is Thinker Toys from Michael Michalko. Hope I'm not butchering his name. But the acknowledgement states, I thank Charlotte Bruni, parish administrator of St. Vincent Paul de Paul in Churchville, New York, for reawakening my faith and for reminding me the single most important thing in life, which I had forgotten long ago. Charlotte reminded me that the real nature of human feeling is mostly the same from person to person, mostly the same in every person everywhere on earth. Of course, there is that part of human feeling where we all feel, uh, where we all are different, right? Each one of us has our own idiosyncrasies and our own unique human character. That is the part people are talking about when they are talking about feelings and comparing feelings. But that part is about 10% of the feelings we feel. 90%, 90% of all our feelings is stuff in which we are all the same and feel the same things. This shared universal human feeling has been forgotten by most people, hidden in the mess of opinion, conflicts, and personal differences voiced by governments, religions, politicians, academics, celebrities, and yes, of course, the omnipresent and omnipotent mass media. These voices of disharmony and disunity have disconnected us from each other and have rusted our hearts. We need to ignore these voices of discord and reawaken each other to honor and respect this huge ocean, this 90%, in which all our feelings are alike. Maybe if we do that, we will have heaven on earth. Now, I don't know about his statements about heaven on earth, but the 90%, the mass majority of the feelings that we feel, I mean, this is what I see has been going on so much in the world, especially right now. I like to think of the, the extreme, especially with politics, right? The extreme right and the extreme left, or in your case, right and left. But the extremes, I would say, even if we went overboard and said, the extremes had 5% on each side. Where would that leave the rest of us? 90%. Now he's talking about just our human feelings and emotions. And if you just think about everyday life, what you have to go through, 90% of it is pretty much the same. I don't wanna mean that you do the same thing as me, as your neighbor, as whatever, but I mean in the relation to feelings and just the generality of life, right? We all have to eat, we all have to sleep, we all have certain things that we need to do for whether that's just staying alive, putting a roof over our head, um, feeling a certain way, but all of us do very similar things. And today everything is all challenge, discord, right? Uh, uh, you know, competition, but in such a heightened state. Now, what do we do about this, right? We can look at each other's differences and we can parse everybody up by their differences, but what does that really accomplish? I think one of the biggest things that he says, he goes through all of these different things, governments, religions, politicians, all these things that are, are in competition with each other. And then he takes a second and he goes, and of course, the omnipresent and omnipotent mass media. And I don't think this could be a more true statement today. I mean, it, it's so obvious that the mass media is geared towards keeping people divided. And at the end of the day, the, we are the people. And if we are 90% alike in regard to how we go about and live our lives and want for ourselves and want for our families and our friends and for our communities, what are we really arguing about? I mean, the arguments now happen on Facebook. They happen on you know these, these avenues where it's just person to person. It's not like, politician to politician, it's neighbor and neighbor, right? They might not necessarily be neighbors, but they're neighbors in regard to their online presence. And so I just thought that this was you know, really profound. And the fact that this book was written, I've, it says copyright 
1991 and 2006. So this is a second edition. So maybe the original version was in 1991 and the second edition is in 2006 with some additions. But if it was written even in 2006, right? 1991, I mean, it's like, whoa. But 2006, if that acknowledgement was in 2006, what does that tell you about today? I mean, if it was divided back then, imagine what it's like today. I mean, you see it, it's so obvious to so many people. But I wanted to focus on that 90% and I hope this shows you that there are so many things out there that are trying to divide you from your, your brother, your neighbor, your friends. When we really break it down, all of those things that we talk about, they might be true and valid, but do they really mean anything? At the end of the day, what matters? And if 90% matters, if 90% is similar, what are we doing?